The state attorney general says it should not have happened and it won't happen again. In March, a state trooper masqueraded as a member of the media at an event for Governor Christie. Michael Hill is here with more on what happened and what the ramifications are. Michael? Mary Alice, NJTV News was there on March 18th when this happened in South River. The governor encountered some protesters at a town hall meeting. As you can see here, the trooper dressed like a member of the news media, a journalist. He had a camera and all and snapped photos of folks protesting the governor's handling of the pace of Sandy recovery in New Jersey. When the protesters became very vocal in challenging the governor, state police removed them from the meeting, and the trooper, dressed as a journalist, a news photographer, snapped several pictures which reportedly have been deleted. Police had said the plainclothes trooper was an added layer of protection for the governor, but acting attorney general John Hoffman told me it is a no-no. We just don't think it's, uh, it was necessary for security purposes. I mean, there's a balance that you strike at everything. And the one thing about those forums is that it's an opportunity for an open dialogue, an open communication. And I know that's very important. I know that that's what the, the governor wants to make sure that there's open communication and open dialogue. And so for security purposes on balance, it just seemed overzealous and, and not necessary. Has it ever been used or will it be used again for a tactic like that for state police to pose as either reporters or someone else to uh, at an event like that? And not, not if there's not some exigent need or exigent circumstance for it. I mean, we don't, I think on balance, the one thing we don't want to do is, is stifle any communication or, or stifle people from feeling they can express themselves freely. So in circumstances like that in which there's an open town hall meeting and there's not some exigent or uh, unforeseen circumstance, I don't think it's necessary. And so we shut that down and that won't be happening again in those circumstances. The state trooper remains unnamed, and Mary Alice, no disciplinary action has been taken against the state trooper. You know, law enforcement goes undercover all the time for lots of different reasons. What makes this different? Tom O'Reilly with the Police Institute at Rutgers, Newark, told me, he said, in cases like this where there are no known threats against the governor, no physical threats or anything like that, where this kind of crosses the line is inappropriate is that because there are no known threats, why would you take this kind of approach against these protesters who are exercising their First Amendment rights? And I think there are a lot of people in the law enforcement community who may see this the same way, and certainly professional journalists, a society of professional journalists would certainly frown upon something like this because it impugns on the integrity of journalists all around the world when someone is posing as we are not that we are on any high horse or anything like that. But it, it, it goes to the credibility of those who are out there reporting legitimately. And then it, if you're not a real journalist, then what are you doing posing as a journalist, taking pictures of people who are exercising their First Amendment rights? So you're saying it's violating a public trust in a way? It certainly is. And O'Reilly with the Police Institute says we can understand when law enforcement infiltrates groups and goes undercover when there is criminal activity that is to be pursued. But in this case... There was no criminal activity to be, to be pursued. All right. Thank you, Michael Hill. Sure.